We continue the 2021 season previews today with the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team who surprisingly got knocked down in the playing rounds. And really, in all honesty, are they heading towards a rebuild? That's the big question coming towards Penguins fans. They've been so good for so long that it's going to be weird if they go into a rebuild. So let's get what happened. Let's get into what can happen for the Pittsburgh Penguins in the 2020-2021 season from my perspective. First off, if you're new to the channel, hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here. And also, if you haven't already, please go subscribe down below. If you have already, you know, really trying to grind on this YouTube channel, trying to get as much subscribers as possible. And we really are in all honesty. We're, we're gaining a lot of subscribers day by day, and it's getting pretty awesome. We're almost 40 subs away from 700, which is absolutely amazing. So, yeah. And also, if you have already, please go check out the links in the description below, which includes my Twitter, my Instagram, my Discord, and my TikTok. Yes, I have all four of those social medias. And, yeah, let's get into what happened last season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And really, in all honesty, it was a good season until the playoffs eh? so last season for the Pittsburgh Penguins was above all just an absolutely pretty good season uh, 69 games played in a shortened season 40 wins 23 losses and six overtimes for 68 total points they were seventh in the NHL and when I look at this and I say you know what that's pretty good finish um this team I swear to God every player on this team was injured at one point um I swear to God Crosby was injured Crosby was injured for like from the start of the season till like the middle of the season. Malkin got injured for a little bit there. Latang was injured. Getzel got injured. And then, you know, Tristan Jari came in and played. They lost, you know, Matt Murray, everything going down with him. They, this team has just gone through so much in 2019-20 that it's amazing that they saw, that they sat in that standing. And I'm impressed. So I think um I even said in the Jack Adams video that I made a few months ago, um, that Mike Sullivan could have even gone that could have even gone the Jack Adams. Because honestly he was a he was a great coach. He really coached that team through a lot of injuries, and I'm pretty impressed. The pause killed him. Um, I think anyone could say that the pause pretty much killed the Pittsburgh, killed the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, they won one game in in their bubble, and they lost to Montreal in four games in the playoffs, which was pretty much an upset um, when you look at it. Um, Montreal, when I look at them, they were pretty lucky to get out of that round against Pittsburgh. They did put up a big fight against Philly, but um, they were lucky to get out of there against Pittsburgh, and I think. COVID thing really ran them down. And then I look at this team, you know, everyone's saying like, oh, well, these guys are getting older. These guys are getting too old to, you know, put up points and they're going to start, they're going to start regressing and um, depleting. Yeah, that's definitely going to happen. And they're doing their best to keep them. They're, they're doing their best to keep themselves um, from that from happening, but it's, it's the inevitable in all honesty. So, you know, Pittsburgh fans, I get ready for a pretty interesting couple of years, probably after this season, maybe after next season, but, um, you know, get ready for a, a long time to come. The key departures and key arrivals list for the Pittsburgh Penguins is pretty big. So starting off there, probably the biggest one, uh, Matt Murray. Matt Murray did not play very well last season in Pittsburgh, so I'm really not surprised that he was dealing off to Ottawa. I mean, in Ottawa, he'll do so much success. Uh, Patrick Hornquist, we're not even going to talk about that trade. That was, trade was just ridiculous. I made so many videos on that and how, jump, how dumb Jim Rutherford was. But yeah, this, that was just... Ugh. That tree gave me neck pain. And I'm not even a Penguins fan. I'm the furthest thing from a Penguins fan. Uh, Nick Bajustad as well. He's a good, um, good solid forward. Jack Johnson, a different Jack Johnson, which is the, oh wait, no, the same Jack Johnson. There was like so many Jack Johnsons that I'm like, wait a second. So yeah, Jack Johnson, not that big of a deal um, that he left. His contract was awful. You know, everything said with that. Uh, Justin Schultz, he may do a little bit of an effect there. Uh, Connor Sheary as well. It sucks that he had to go. And then uh, Patrick Marlowe, who was really just a rental for Pittsburgh, in all honesty, acquired at the deadline, signed with San Jose. So, you know, the departures, I think Murray Hornquist will probably hurt the most. Sheary may, and Sheary probably will in some aspects, because Sheary played for the Penguins for a long time, and he was actually not, he actually had some pretty good seasons there. It sucks to see all three of those guys go, but they had to make room for the new guys moving in. The key arrivals for the Pittsburgh Penguins consist of, starting off here, Mike Matheson. This one didn't really make too much sense to me. Yes, they do need to improve the defense maybe a little bit, but um, Matheson, not really the best choice you want to go out for. They also got Colin Skivior, who probably will play a solid fourth-line right winger, uh, maybe even push for third-line minutes as well, potentially depending on what you get there. Uh, Mark Jankowski, a pretty solid center. I think he will definitely play some pretty well minutes for the Penguins. And then you have Cody Ceci, who also really wasn't the best choice for a defender. I was like, what? And then you also got 
Kasperi Kapanen. So Kapanen, I think, will definitely uh, help out in the right wing spot there. He may even play on the first line. Uh, I have him as projected first line, but he may get pushed out of there. It depends on how um, the guys below him play. But yeah, this team looks pretty good with those new assets. They're a little bit questionable, but I think they may work out in some areas for Pittsburgh. But yeah, anyways, let's get into what happened offensively in the projected lineup for the Penguins. The projected lineup for the Pittsburgh Penguins, starting off here offensively, you have Jake Getzel on the on the left wing side there, Jason Zucker, Jared McCann, and Brandon Tanev. Then you have um, Lafferty as your fill-in player. On the center court there, you have Crosby, Malkin, Yankowski, and Bluger. On the right wing side there, you have Kapanen, Rust, Rodriguez, and Skivior. So I look at that team and I say, you know what? It doesn't look too horrible. Um... The first line of Getzel, Crosby, Kapanen looks great. Um, good off, great offensively. I think maybe even Zucker could push for for first line there too. Zucker has played. Zucker hasn't played too bad in a couple of the past couple of years. Second line: Zucker, Malkin, and Rust. Um, I think that's also another good um, offensively underrated line there as well. Third line: McCann, Yankowski, Rodriguez. I think that's a bunch of a bunch of new acquisitions beside McCann, of course. And I think that line will do pretty well. Then you have Brandon Tenev, Teddy Bluger, and Skivior. I think that will definitely be a nice physical line there as well because Bluger it can put up the goals, but it can also put up the physicality. And then you have Rafferty, Lafferty as your filling guy for the left wing side there. This team looks pretty good on the offensive side of things. I think their top six looks great. Their bottom six, they may want to work on a, little, a, a tiny bit, but I think it still looks good. But yeah, I think this team with the new acquisitions, they still are managing. They're still managing pretty well with everything that they have. So yeah, I don't think they're playing too bad with the team that they have right now. Defensively there now, you have Dumoulin starting off on the left D side. Dumoulin, Matheson, and Pedersen. On the right D side, you have Latang, Marino, and CeCe. It looks not horrible on the defense. Dumoulin and Latang. Dumoulin pretty underrated. Latang, bad in the playoffs, good in the regular season. It really depends on Latang. Uh, Matheson and Marino. Marino pretty underrated. Probably one of the most underrated D-men in the league. And then you have Matheson, who's a pretty good... who will play second pairing. He's pretty good on... He might probably play third pairing. No, I think Pedersen will definitely push for third pairing. And then you have Pedersen and CC. CC no surprise there. CC not the best defenseman in the world. So I don't think he'll really play too much. But yeah, the defense doesn't look too bad when I look at that. Um, I don't... I think Matheson and... A Matheson-CC pairing is more likely than a Pedersen-CC pairing. But yeah, I think the defense still looks good. They may want a little bit more depth on that. Uh, maybe bring in one more person from free agency or maybe even trade for a guy. Maybe even bring in Sammy Vatanen because that could actually be something useful. Um, Vatanen, I think, could come in there and play second pairing on the left east side. So yeah, I don't, think that honest, I don't think that honestly would be too bad. But yeah, anyways, let's get into the goaltending, which also doesn't look too, too bad. On the goaltending side there, it looks pretty good there as well. You have Tristan Jari as your starting goaltender. Casey DeSmith, and then you have Larmy as your third guy. So, I'm going to go a little bit in depth here because the thing with Jari is he needs to stay consistent. He needs to keep, he needs to avoid a setback. He's one of those biggest guys where I'm like, you know what? He had a great season this season. If he does bad this season, I'm sorry, but Pittsburgh's kind of screwed. Um, they traded away Matt Murray already. If Jari has a setback season, Pittsburgh's kind of screwed. Just, just saying. Just being completely honest with you. So Jari needs to avoid the setback. I don't think he will um, not not avoid the setback. I think he will definitely avoid it and be a better player when we move around to that. But you know, I think it I think Jari just needs to avoid the setback and then we're good. So to Smith then, there I think the Smith needs to stay as a solid backup goaltender. He's been in the AHL for a while now. And everything going on with that. And then you have Larmy as well, a solid third goaltender. So the goaltending. If Jari can avoid a setback, this team looks great on that front. Uh, the defense looks good, maybe a little bit more depth there, and then the um, the top six and the top and the bottom six look pretty good on Pittsburgh's offense too. So this team is managing, but you can tell their players are aging, and you know this team is heading towards an inevitable slowly decline and maybe even a rebuild. So really, in all honesty, it's just yeah. And finally, now we are on to the playoff prediction. Do I think the Pittsburgh Penguins will make the 2021 Stanley Cup playoffs. The answer is, hmm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I look at this and I say, are they, there's so many, there's so much competitive in that division. I could see any team making it. Um, I already said my three Boston, New York, Philly 
Boston Islanders, Philly. And then um, any it's up for grabs for anyone else. It's up for grabs for the Rangers, it's up for grabs for the Pens, it's up for grabs for the Washington. It's honest, you're going to see some really good teams in this division miss out, miss out in the playoffs. And I'm worried that Pittsburgh may be one of them. But if everything goes right, they should have a pretty good shot at making it in the playoffs. So let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please go make sure to leave a like. Hit that subscribe button as we try and get to 700 subscribers by June of 2021. Thank you all for the constant support. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the San Jose Sharks season preview.